These are the plaintiffs, Kathleen DeMichelle and Linda Berlin. Kathleen says the defendant, her former tenant, all but wrecked her beautiful house she rented to her. And today's judgment day. That's right. The filthy woman left the place a deplorable mess. She has the pictures to prove it and is suing for every single penny of the $3,000 they're owed. This is the defendant, Elena de Tulio. She says the plaintiff Kathleen is a cruel and cold-hearted person who had her evicted in the middle of her and her husband splitting up. She owes this woman nothing but a good riddance, and she thinks the judge is going to side with her when all the evidence is presented in this court today. She's accused of leaving the place a mess. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant's a pig who is the worst tenant ever. But the defendant says the plaintiff, Catherine, is pure evil. It's the case of you're worse than me. Okay, Ms. DeMichelle and Ms. Berlin, you are suing Ms. DeTulio for $3,000, a statutory maximum in your state, for damages and back rent that, according to you, she owes you. Who would like to tell me what happened here? Yes, Your Honor. Um, we had rented um, a lease agreement to Elena and her husband, Mark, um, May 1st, 2014 to April 30th, 2015. We evicted her um, and she moved out on April 1st due to um, lack of rent payment. Okay, may I see the lease? And uh, she hadn't paid since when? She stopped payment on February 1st, so the January was her last payment. Okay, and do you know why you didn't get any more rent payments? Um, she wanted her husband to pay half, and they were in the middle of a divorce. And so was the husband still living there? No, he was not. He moved out. Okay. Um, so go on. Um, so in February, um, she decided she wasn't going to pay anymore, um, and she said for us to use the security deposit for the rent. Right. Which I told her, as noted in the lease, that she's not allowed to do that. It doesn't ha even have to be noted in the lease that security deposit is security deposit. It's not rent. But um, when you tell her you, you, uh, you can't use your security deposit, that's not what it's for, what does she say? She said, uh, I'm going to use it. Try to evict me. It'll take you six months to get me out. Okay. So you filed the eviction on what date? March 25th, uh, 2015. Oh, it took you a while to get the... Why did it take so long? Just... Life? That was, um, she had, uh, was supposed to be out the end of March, but she filed for an extension. Show me the paperwork. How did the negotiation happen? Did we, you have a lawyer who negotiated we things? We had a, uh, an attorney trying and to negotiate. And did that lawyer go to court or did they just negotiate things with her? They went to court to try to evict her um, and then she never showed up at court. So, the so judge didn't you get a judgment against her? To get her out that day, but she filed for and an then extension. She, so you, did you not go to court for the day that you had the eviction? Did you not get the notice or you just didn't go or what? I actually I consulted the lawyer and he advised me not to go to court because it's um, either way you're going to get evicted. So there's no point for it. OK, so you didn't go to court and then they they got an eviction that says you got to get out. And then what happened? You filed for an extension. I filed for an, for an Is extension. Is that what the lawyer told you to do tactically so you'd have more time? Yes, pretty much. Yes. OK, so you got the extension and then you got out when? March th April 1st, April A 1st. April 1st? Is that where the extension actually took her into April? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, what happened when you go in there on April 1st? How does she leave the place, according to you? Um, we walked in with the sheriff because we were not allowed in there. Mm -hmm. um, and these were the pictures to show that she broom swept the apartment. And you're, I suppose when you say broom swept, it's sarcastic, right? Yes. Okay, <laughs> because that's what she had said to you, that she had broom swept. <clears throat> yep. Okay. And that she took all her personal belongings out. Okay, there's everything. a lot of belongings that I'm seeing here, including vacuum cleaners and ironing boards. What's this about? Um, on March 31st, I uh, sent like a group message both to my husband and Kathleen. Can I read it? Yeah. It says, Mark, I have removed mostly everything from the house except your belongings. So landlord will take possession as of 4-1-15 at 12 o'clock. So you need to remove your belongings today. Kathleen, I left the keys in my mailbox. If you'd like to take possessions back immediately. Why are you telling him the same day that he has to move stuff out that you're like, wouldn't it have been better to plan that with him in advance? Um, or you're not in good terms with him? It's a restraining order against um, oh. the husband. Did you have, uh, according to you, she had a new boyfriend living in the house? Um, Part-time, I guess. He was there a lot, according to the neighbors. His car was always there. 
Okay, so let me hear from your perspective, okay? When you call them in February and say, I'm not going to pay you rent, tell me about that. Um, legally, we um, separated December 10th. So on the day that my ex-to-be husband moved out, he read the text message that he was going to send to Kathleen uh, stating that um, he's out of the house, he's not going to pay rent, and I'm um, solely responsible for everything. When I spoke to Kathleen over the phone, she said she spoke on the phone to him and she explained to him that he was responsible because his name was on the lease, because I know that that's right. what he, he I read. know, but then and February came and it's time to pay rent, and what did you do? January, I um, I paid rent on my own. He left me with, with, he took the car, he closed the bank account, overdrawn joint bank account. I have a two-year-old in the house. I, I work part-time. Is he the I father of the two-year-old? Yes. Okay. And um, So p please get to the answer to my question, which is you called her in February and told her what about the rent? So do most tenants um, work the system to screw landlords over? No, I don't think so. Usually it's the landlords trying to screw the tenants over. You think so? Yes, of course. Okay. What do you think? The same thing she thinks. Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody have a different opinion? I'm just curious. What do you say? I don't know. It depends on who you're dealing with. You know what? That feels right to me. That actually feels right to me. Uh, going inside the courtroom. I texted her and I said that I cannot afford, there's no way I can afford to pay full amount of $1,300. And um, what I could afford was the 650 of my share. And if she could contact Mark, and so did you pay, did you send the 650? No, I didn't. Okay, Because why I not? didn't have that money. Because Could you I spent had to it pay in those two because weeks? Because I had to pay electric bill and I had to pay gas bill. I know, but you also I have to pay, pay rent. Yes, but, and I didn't have, and I didn't have enough money for rent. So you say to her, I'm at some point, I'm not going to pay you any more rent. Use the security deposit. Yes. In fact, let me read from your answer. She told me that's what wasn't what it was for, but I had no other choice and she had it. So why not use it? Because it's not for you to use, it's for her to use. You understand that? It's security deposit, security deposit. It's in the event that there might be damages where she claims that you know she had to hire people to clean, hire people to move the stuff you didn't move out. Let's talk about that because I, I it sounds like your husband's a jerk if you're telling me the truth about everything. But here's the thing, you picked him, she didn't, they didn't, right? You are right to say he's still responsible. So you can sue him for what happens here for his half of it but they don't have to chase him. So now the picture she's showing me of all that junk that's left in there, you can't leave an apartment that way. It's not just dirty and it is, it's also got lots and lots of junk out there. That means that they have to pay somebody to move that stuff out if your ex isn't gonna move it, okay? So did you dump it? We dumped it. Okay, so did, did you have to pay somebody to dump it? Uh, yes, we- Okay, so let's talk about what you're suing for. You're capped at 3000 You are suing for $1,300 for the months of February, March, and then April because she was there a day in April. Did you re-rent the place? I re-rented it April 25th. So you're suing for the prorated rent between April 1st and April 24th? Correct. Okay. What else are you suing right. for? Um, we're also suing for the legal fees for the eviction, suing for the um, cleanup and the, rug the rugs to be shampooed. And 107 for the I mean, locksmith. The rug was really um, dirty. Why were the rugs so dirty? Uh, we had two dogs. I mean, look at the difference from where your sofa was covering that and your sofa's not covering that. That's pretty bad. All right. And you're asking for $100 in debris removal, $100 cleaning fee, $107 locksmith. Why is she responsible for locksmith? Why would she have to pay for it? She doesn't is the answer. Um, all right. And uh, according to them, there's two broken windows. Um, like, how do you know a tree limb in a storm didn't didn't crack it? It was on the inside. It was a double pane window. And I, I and need the to inside see that. Panes, I need to see that. It's it's noted in the, in the uh, Frank and Jim's report. Yep, on um, both of them, it was the inside that was broken. All right, jeez, they're entitled to twenty six hundred dollars for rent for February and March. They're entitled to $1,040 in the prorated rent that they're asking for for the month of April. Um, you're gonna have to pay the legal fees and that leaves you well above the 3,000. My verdict in this case, based on the evidence that I'm seeing is, is for the plaintiffs in the amount of $3,000. Now, you have a right to go file a lawsuit against your husband or in the divorce, say this is a debt that we both have and you've left me paying all of it and sue him for half of it, okay? Verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you.
So the verdict goes for the plaintiff here. Step right out. The defendant on the losing side of this verdict says uh, what on one on your side? My ex-husband to be got the easy way out, and um, I'm going to try to sue him for the for the debt that mm -hmm. we have together. What's your living arrangement now? Where, where did you move to, and how is it going now? I moved to a smaller apartment and um, looking for a second job. Okay. All right. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Head right around the corner this way. All right, so come on in here, and what's your feeling on this? I'm glad justice was finally served, and, you know, tenants really need to pay attention to, you know, their lease agreements and stay abiding to it. Mm -hmm. you have any sympathy for what she was going through on the personal side, or is it just business? No, because, you know, she had a boyfriend that had, you know, a $100,000 car. He was advising her how to get around the law. So I think justice was served. Okay. What do you think, Arv? Okay, Kurt, you know, even though security deposits are not allowed to be used um, for last month's rent, a lot of people do it. It doesn't make it right. Um, the fact is there's not a lot of recourse if a tenant does that. So we got, what, 15 seconds left, uh, and I have nothing else to say. You guys want to dance or something? There you go.